Before we get into this episode, I just want to tell you guys that this episode is brought to you by Africa's premium online poker and sports betting platform, pokerbet.co.za. So make sure to subscribe down below. You can follow the link below, create an account, and join in on the fun. Have a kick ass time. Cameron Simon, ladies and gentlemen. Oh! Good to be back. It's good to be back. Yeah. It's been a while. It's been a while. You actually drove to my house. Yeah, the last that's... the last uh, two times that I've been a guest on your show, it's the studio was still at your house, yeah. which is quite a distance from here. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I drove from the gym, which is about two hundred meters from here, yeah. past the studio, went to all the your way, house, yeah. and then drove all the way back. But we made it. Man. Did you see interesting sights on your way there, on the way uh, back? You know, the, the same stuff you always see on the streets of South Africa. <laughs> yeah. The same old, same old, same old, same old, same <laughs> old, you know. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's awesome to have you here. We we said it in your intro. Your your fighting knowledge, not only as an amateur coach, but as someone that is working with some of the best coaches in the country. It's it's awesome to see the the type of attention to detail that you have in training. And you know, it's it's UFC. 297 this weekend we have Drickus fighting and i was not here with Drickus's camp you know i was um i was on holiday and i was focusing on um getting to the family but you were like the bigger guys especially but you also didn't have a holiday at all like you were here camping <clears throat> with them. yeah i know like i had I had a break. Yeah. Like we were training every day and we, we had, but like I still had, had a break in the sense of I didn't have all the clients and the, mm. you know, most of the, the amateur fight team were on holiday. So it felt like a bit of holiday. But, okay. But yeah, it was, it was quite cool to be here and to, to be part of the camp and see mm. how everything went and, you know, see the mentality of uh, not just Trickus. Obviously, Trickus is in a mentality. He's pre preparing for the biggest fight of his career, but all the other guys that are just so invested and just yeah. said no screw that holiday we yet to make sure that yeah. belt's coming out yeah I, I would have definitely lost the fight with my parents if i said no i'm staying in pretoria but uh it's really cool to see especially because i think a lot of people don't know but our training is split into like the smaller guys yeah. i would say what about 75 and below 77 and below maybe maybe 70 and below yeah so yeah about Oh yeah, lightweights and under pretty much. Yes, and yeah. then and then from there, if you're a welter up, even if you look like you had a little bit too much Christmas yes, dinner, yes. That's the, that's you go the to the fa one, to the fat guys. Yeah, so you, a lot the, of then you the fat the, the fat small guy and you go with the big guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so and they had to most of them stayed here during the course of that camp in order just to help Drikas, which is amazing. And I know that, you know, Drikas had, he, he had Neil Geyser to grapple with. He had all these guys that he can still go reach out to Tall and all those guys. And it's just, it's just cool to see that. I think Drikas loves a December holiday because that's the only time he yeah, really he gets, gets a break, yeah. he really can go back to his family get a proper break and switch off a little bit from yeah. the crazy lifestyle he has yeah definitely but the motivation was now different you know and when the opportunity comes knocking it's you have to take it with both hands did you see did you see him obviously every single fight even with the robert whitaker fight you could see him almost go into another mentality it was like a his attention to detail to his programming was insane but could you even see it change now with this fight with Sean Strickland? Yeah, so <clears throat> there's one specific big change that I saw uh, in Trickus's mentality and the way he carried himself uh, in, in the build-up to this fight, which is a bit different to previous fights. And it's a, it's a positive change. Like, he was really specifically... Obviously, when he's in the gym and he's doing his rounds, he's super focused and, you know, he's goal-driven, but... He was just so relaxed. He was, yeah. you know, he put in the work and everything went, but there was just a different aura around Drikus. There's just a, it seems like a knowingness of of, of what's coming and and mm. a positive, like, outlook on, on, on everything. Yeah. Like, he didn't, it was... He was almost, like, quietly calm. It was mm. weird. He had, like, the weird, very chilled, very focused, just, like, focused on... The recovery was a massive aspect, but focusing on every session, get the session done, focus on recovery. And yeah. then just 
bouncing between those but, two. But but you know what I mean? Like mm. in the build up to to any of our fights, there's a certain level of personality changes that happens as the fights get closer. Mm. You know, there's certain things that uh, your priorities change a little bit, yes. and the more the closer the fight gets, the more changes, the more the more focused you get. Some that emotions start. Vision. Yeah, yeah. But w- this time with Trickers, it was almost like all of that was still there, mm. all of that, but it was just. It was just more fun. Yeah. It, it was just more positive, more fun. And as you say, there was this this weird calmness. Yeah. Where he's just like, no, I know what's going to happen. I know what I need to do. I'm getting it done. And, mm. you know, it was just a weird vibe. It's just such a positive, relaxed vibe. And that I'm not used to drinkers like that always before fight. Yeah. So it was pretty cool to see that and to see usually, how, much he's, how much he's grown. Yeah. You know, in yeah, terms it, of, of self confidence, he was like, it was weird seeing it was like a more not a mature drink because obviously he is mature. It was just like, you're scaring me. Why are you this calm? Yeah. And then you go out there, have a great session, and you just like, you can switch it off again and, you know, rest. Yeah. It was, it was, it was cool to see. And do you think, do you think it's just, the, the what, 12 years, 10, 12 years of, of hard work now? It's finally here. Do you think it's it's a momentum shift? Because you can see it at amateur levels. You can see those guys also hone in tunnel vision, maybe even closer to the fight, not at the start of camp. But do you think it's just the 12 years of experience or do you think he um, wants to approach this fight differently? I think it's an experience thing. I think mm. I think he's obviously as a fighter you have to uh, compartmentalize. Yeah. You know, you have to you have to switch certain mindsets on and off. Yeah. And I just think he got better with it. Mm. You know, I just think he's an expert in that now. Yeah. And he did it so well in this camp to to switch from different mindsets without any triggers, just switching it on and switching it off. Yeah. And I think that's the experience thing. I think that's the twelve years of fighting at the top level and. I just think he's just got everything sorted now. Yeah. Just got every aspect of the game under control. Yeah, it is awesome. It's it's really fun to see it as well. And what did you think of the what did you think of the mental battle beforehand? Obviously words were words were shared at the press conference, the fight broke out. What what as a from a coach's perspective, what do you think that shows going into this fight? Yeah, so after the fact, I view it a lot differently than in the moment. Sitting there watching this guy saying this stuff yeah. Yeah. about our coach and this and that, mm. I was like, I got a bit emotional for one at one point. I was like, no, fuck, that's not the point. Yeah. Like that's exactly what he's trying to do is to get is trying to trigger him. Yeah. And, and also like Sean Strickland at the PI, he told the coach, he went up to coach and he told him, like, listen, I'm gonna give you guys a lot of shit. Like I'm I'm I am going to do that. You know, I am the champion. I'm here to sell the fight. So it it was kind of expected. I just didn't think he was going to go that route. I was like, okay, you're actually nice behind the cameras, but now you're a complete dick. Yeah, and so. and, and, and 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 like going so hard so quickly. Yeah. Right? It, was, it, was, it was just like that escalated yeah. very quickly. Yeah. Like that, <laughs> that went from Drickers is a real man to your coach will finish you in the back. And I was yeah, like, fuck, yeah. that was quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, we took a know, weird it? detour here. Yeah, well, like, what's well, happening? Well, <laughs> I thought this was this this far, I thought they were gonna be friends. Yeah. And he then, definitely read the art of war. It's just like he, yeah. Mikey Mikey, and then he just like attacked. But the, the 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 interesting thing about that was like he was throwing his shots at Drickus and he was he was taking jabs and what Drickus did brilliantly is he didn't re- react to it at all. Just he like we saw in his training, that calm. Exactly, just, it was just yeah. he, he didn't react to it at all. At all, he, I mean, the first the first comment he tried to make to Drickus was, uh, "I hope your coach doesn't grab your dick." And Drickus mm. said, "That's probably not the worst advice." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So, <laughs> So I was like, okay, you know, he's not getting like Solid. under his skin. And yeah. he really tried hard. And then Dricker said one thing, mm. right? And I understand that it's a it's a very tough topic, but back to the point that if you dish it, you need to be able to take it. Yeah. And he wasn't mentally prepared to take that, yeah. you know, to, to, to be tuned like that about something so personal to him. Yeah. Although he does it to other people to get a reaction, mm. now the tables have turned. Yeah. So that was quite interesting. And I think that was a that was a big 
that was a big victory for Drikas before the fight. Yeah. Is firstly to get him triggered. Like, when have you ever seen Sean Strickland lose his shirt? Never. Never, except that situation. Where have you ever seen him make eye contact at a face-off? Like, yeah. you've never seen that. He's always, like, awkwardly looking at the cameras, looking at, I don't know who, but not looking at his opponents. Yeah, yeah. For the first time, you see him lock in as well. So it's a complete personality change in, in his mannerisms as well. Yeah, so me and Coach Neil spoke about it a little, and it's, it's, a, it's an interesting thing. So you... you you, if you push a push a beast into a corner, mm. it's going to come out harder because mm. there's nowhere to go, mm. and that can play into our favor. Yeah, because if he's going to fight emotionally, yeah, he's, he's going to make mistakes. One hundred percent. He's going to yeah. make mistakes. He's going to get caught and he's going to get in trouble. Yeah, but also you have to understand that. Listen. We just made him mad, mm. so we have to be prepared. He's going to come harder than ever. Yeah. So it's a it's a double edged sword, but if you understand what's going on, it's easy to manage. Um, but I think that was a big victory on 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 our side and on Drikas' side. The way that whole press conference played out. Yeah, hundred percent. When the fight was announced, obviously preparing for a guy like Sean Strickland, you can you can almost watch the fights maybe one handful of times and you kind of know what he's going to do. Like in the terms of he has a very unique, weird Philly shell type of thing that he used very well against Adesanya. And then I remember after my fight and after the surgery coming back, coach asking like, we need to we need to fight like Sean Strickland. It's just like you try, it sucks. It's it, fucking it, it really hurts. It sucks. Yeah, it's not fun. It's well, <laughs> <laughs> do you think do you think the uh, because I know as well with Drickus's double distance, you would try the Felicia, you would try the mannerisms Sean Strickland has for about 14 seconds, and you'll be like, okay, this is a bad idea. I'm going to get knocked out. Let's go back to fighting normally. Do you think that also has a massive effect on how you prepare for the fight, especially with a guy with a weird stance like that? I think so, but I don't think you should, you should change your game yeah. because of it. Yeah. You know, if, if you start focusing too much on the other guy, sure, he's unorthodox, sure, he's got a bunch of things mm. that he does differently that, that we're not used to and that I think nobody in the world's used to. Uh, but but you shouldn't be putting on putting too much emphasis on, okay, we have to fight this guy in this manner because this is what he's he, doing. Yeah. Uh, another thing is that's impossible to mimic. Mm. So how good of a of a mimic can you can you do yeah. and you know how 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 well is that going to translate mm. so if you're trying to focus on that which wasn't the goal all of us tried to mimic him as the best we could uh, and back to your point 14 seconds i think it was in the double distance and and mr mark Hume came up to me and said dude you checked around is there anything else i can change a bit to be a bit more like sean strickland and i said yeah i think if if you maybe just put your wrists a bit closer together and he looked at me laughed and said fuck you and <laughs> yeah. so i was like okay no, yeah, i get yeah, you yeah. I'm, I'm not trying gonna, to set him up yeah, yeah so so i don't think that's that's something that that is good to have that look mm. but i don't think that's something that was focused on yeah, I don't think Trick is focused on this. Is obviously you look at the tape and you and you try and mimic it and you see gaps and you see holes, but you sh you shouldn't. And I don't think any of us did focus too much on that. Yeah, and still stick to what I'm good at. Yeah, still stick to my game and my attributes. And Trick did that fantastic through camp, I believe. He does that well in every single camp. You yeah. can see it in the Robert Whitaker fights. He exactly. didn't change it. You, you, obviously, there's stuff that you, that Coach Mornay Fissa also sees and it's like, I, I think in that fight and I think Drikas has said it on a podcast as well, it's just um, the moment that fight got announced, Coach was like, oh, you're fighting, you're fighting that whole fight Southpaw. And <laughs> Drikas is like, huh? Yeah, <laughs> like no way. There's no way I'm doing that. And it worked. <clears throat> it, not immediately when I heard it, but when I went home and I thought a bit about it and I looked at Robert Wittek uh, again, it made sense. Yeah. It made sense that, uh, like, to to Robert Whittaker's biggest attribute, he's got two, is a blitz, where he covers a lot of distance in a straight line. Mm. The other thing is the same hand, same kick, head kick, mm. right? So... In an opposite base, it's easier to clear the channel because all you need is outside position with your front foot and you're away from the strong hand from the second punch that's coming. Yeah. But if you're in the same base and he comes in 
you can't go around the front end. You have to go around the back end. Yeah. And then you have the risk of getting caught with it. Yeah. And if you don't get caught with that, the head kick can follow. Mm. So after thinking about it a little bit and looking at Robert Gwitlick's fight, it made sense to me. But just back to coach, who's just he just sees these things. Mm. Like he just sees everything. And the the as you said, the confidence and the confidence that coach has in seeing these things and immediately knowing that is the answer. Yeah. And says, this is how it goes. And that's why we trust him so much. And yeah. whatever he says to do, whether it makes sense to me or not, it'll be done. Yeah. So hearing the fight is, it's a done deal. They're fighting each other for the middleweight title. What was your initial thoughts of like, how is he finishing him? My immediate thought was guillotine after panic shoot after he got maybe rocked or dropped. Yeah. That was 100, 100, like to the T, that was my prediction, was exactly that. And then when I heard the stories of Double Distance and I saw some of the footage and I saw his last sparring session before flying over, I was like, oh, no, he's knocking him out. Like the, the guillotine is not, this, it's yeah. not even going to get to that. He's going to knock him out. Yeah, it might get to that if, uh, you know, the punch isn't perfect. But as you said... His last couple of sparring sessions were just out of this world. Yeah. And uh, as you said, my uh, my confidence in the guillotine finish isn't there anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I it's... also think he's going to catch him. And mm. all of these guys don't understand. We've seen that over his whole career. Mm. It's a different box of frogs when Trigus lands. Yeah. And is. you see that yeah. with every single guy. Mm. You know, when Trigus <laughs> lands with that power, yeah. I, I don't sucks. care if you've never been finished. Yeah. You've never fought Trigus. Yeah. So I also th believe, and I believe it won't go to the championship rounds either. Yeah. I definitely don't. I, also don't, I, I said within three as well. I said in the third. In the third, yeah. yeah I'm so, not allowed to bet, but if I was, I would have said that's, that's, that's how, how I would have spent yeah, same. my I would, I would have also my put 27 some, cents. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I've got about 32. <laughs> yeah. But I would have definitely put it on, on a third round finish for Drickers. Mm. But uh, we when have, he's knocking him out or catching him in a choke after dropping him, yeah, it's one of it's one or the other. Yeah, we have the fight card here, and we actually just went through it off camera as well while Gila was fucking around with the sound. Yeah, yeah. But uh, and Gila was being bad at his job. Yeah, yes, terrible Gila. How dare you? It's a new year. It's supposed to be a new you. <laughs> Cease. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is a new him. He was a lot better at his job last year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. But we actually have a great card. I think people on social media is giving this card like a lot of shit, undeservably so, because I, I quite enjoy this card. Yeah, I, so, so do I. Yeah, I, I think it's a fun one. On the prelims, we have Charles Jourdain. He, yeah. He's always a crack of a guy I'm, I'm gonna go with Jordan I'm, definitely I'm backing him definitely I agree and uh Brad uh Katona I think he gets it done in bantamweight against that Garrett and I Anfield. also agree yeah okay the main event this is where it gets interesting because Arnold Allen had that loss behind his record but I do think he's gonna get away with the win I think he like throws volume he's super strong he's fighting a, go a guy that is undefeated um and I I'm actually pretty sure he's also with Ruby with Danny's agency but I think Arnold gets it done I think I think Arnold Allen is amazing yeah I I think he hasn't reached his potential yet yeah and I think when he does yo he's gonna be like certain movements he makes and the way he moves and the, the, the way he approaches certain strikes. And it's just, mm -hmm. I, I think it's next level. Mm. So I'm a huge, huge Arnold Allen fan and I definitely think he gets it done. And I even see him fighting for the belt and yeah, maybe even surprising a couple of people when everything comes together. Yeah. I really think he's fantastic. Yeah, he's definitely up there as well. Chris Curtis, I hope, gets knocked out. Yeah, same. Let's, I, let's not beat around the bush, to be honest. Like, uh, yeah, I think <laughs> they they come from the same camp. I think Curtis has has been very vocal in the build up of this fight. Not that he's he's been talking some smack, but I do think he gets. I do think he he gets rocked somewhere in the fight. I think he gets finished, but. 
you know, he's fighting a guy that has the the country's backing. Maybe that adds some pressure, maybe not. I don't know. Yeah, I think the Chris Curtis's fighting style is is unique, mm. but it also leaves a lot of holes because yeah. it is unique. Yeah. He can, he's got a we got a high guard, southpaw, walking you down kind of style. Mm. And if you know how to manage that and and get a couple through, I I hope that happens. Yeah. I'm not so sure though. I think if he if he stays if he stays defensively responsible, yeah, and he doesn't throw caution to the wind, I think he gets the job done. I don't hope. I hope that's not the case. Yeah, but I, I, he's he's good. Yeah, and he really is good. I think he's he's got some flaws. Mm. He's got flaws that can be exploited. We'll see if uh, Mark Andre can can exploit them, mm. and if his team and his coaches have picked up on that, and yeah. if they've prepared for that. Yeah. I hope that's the case, but that's going to be an interesting fight. Yeah, and then Neil Magny, Mike Mallet. Mike Mallet almost got crushed by the crowds by in his last fight on the walkouts when his song started playing. The guys were leaning over to take photos of him yelling, and then like. 25 people just dropped no to the floor. Way. So as he was walking out, these guys were just like falling next to him. And I think that was also in Canada as well. So hopefully they have like insurance done on those walkways. <laughs> I'll quickly, I'll have Gila also get that video yes, to show you please. guys. But yeah, that's, um, I think Neil Magny is no slouch. I think it's a, it's going to be a hard for, fought fight. It's really hard to finish Neil Magny. But Mike Mallet has insane punch power yeah i also think i'm a huge huge neil magny fan yeah i really love the guy i love what he stands for um he loves fighting mm. uh, there's no bullshit with him yeah. there's no stories yeah. there's no he's just himself and he fights brilliantly yeah. but he fights old school yeah the game has changed yeah and i think mike has a lot more of the new school mm. and the 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 new school flair in his style yeah. than Neil Magny. And I don't think he's going to be able to, to handle it. Yeah. I would not be upset if that's not the case. As I said, I love Neil Magny. Mm. But I don't think he's going to he's gonna get the nod in this one specifically for that reason. This, it's two conflicting styles. Mike Mallet has heavy hands. Yeah. So, yeah, I also think it's it, it'll go Mike Mallet's way. Mm. Okay, and Pennington, Bernard Silva... Who you got? <laughs> You're just chuckling. Who you got in this fight? <laughs> I don't know. Because <laughs> I think Raquel Pennington does everything fucking wrong, but she keeps winning. Yeah. So that's that's a tough thing. Like, you know, And that also makes me think, sit there in front of the TV and think, maybe I don't know as much as I think I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because I, cause I yeah. see the mistakes you're making, but you're still getting the job done. Yeah. So maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah. I think that's that's the cool thing about fighting as well. Like you can make you can make a series of mistakes and still walk away with a win. Yeah. And it's just like, are you gonna do it against Bueno Silva? I don't know. I'm leaning towards Silva. I don't know why. Maybe it's the Brazilian fa flair. I don't. I don't. I, I'm as not I, sure. As I said, every single time Raquel fights, I say the same thing, and yeah. I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she is. She is on a five fight win streak. Exactly. Yeah. So, so I say the same thing, and I'm like, ah, oh, she, she's not evolving. She's looking exactly the same as the previous fight, yeah. but she keeps winning. Maybe that's the secret. Is saying the same. Like just because people think you're gonna change every fight, and then fight. they're trying to prepare for yeah, the for the better version. Yeah, of and you. then just the same version yeah, comes yeah. up. Yeah. The exact. <laughs> Same version. Yeah. Yeah, maybe maybe that's the case. I wouldn't be if I was allowed to bet, I wouldn't have bets on this fight. Neither neither would I, yeah. because specifically I think that Silvas should mm. win this fight. Mm. But I felt like that for previous fights against Raquel Bennington and yeah. that hadn't I've been wrong. Yeah. So no, I definitely wouldn't be picking a winner in this fight. And if you put a gun against my head, I'll say Raquel Pennington because I've been wrong so many times. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, there's like a handful of people you don't bet against. Like Edson Barbosa is definitely one of them. I would say uh, Habib, if you if you bet it against him, you would have lost. Um, and then Raquel Pennington. Yeah. That's, those are the goats, basically. <laughs> <laughs> In your opinion, <laughs> said by Cameron Simon. No, no, don't quote me on that. Yeah, it came out of your mouth, though. Final prediction for the main event. 
Main event, I believe Jigas gets it done within three rounds. I believe in the third, I think he's going to be too much for, for Sean to deal with. I think he's got an amazing plan on how to manage Sean's attributes. Mm. And I think he's going to put it on him for two rounds and get the finish in the third. And yeah. it'll be by either he's going to knock him out clean or he's going to rock him and get his neck. Yeah. So that's that's my prediction is Trigger's Duplessis in the third round via knockout or guillotine choke. Cool. I'm going to go more specific. I'm going to go third round knockout. Clean, cold, knockout. Yeah. It's going to yeah. be a fun one. It's, it's going to be like, amazing, man. Yeah, like it's, I, it's it's such a it's such a crazy thing to that that we're sitting here talking about this. Mm, yeah. You know, over how many years that we've it's been training been, together yeah. and that we've you know been working on this dream. Yeah. I can't believe we're sitting here and having this conversation. It's insane. Yeah, I remember coming to CIT. I was so obsessed with the EFC, with the regional circuit. Like, I didn't know the UFC was actually a thing. So I was so tunnel visioned on just like, the EFC is the coolest thing on earth. And then, and I think you and, and Drickus introduced me to, you know, there's, you know, you can go yeah, fight there's, overseas. There's, there's more levels. Yeah, you know, yeah. there's other countries that do this too. It's like, really? And they're better than <laughs> yeah, us. They're be and they're better than us. Yeah. And that's, that's, it's really cool to see. And I think come fight night, a lot of those old memories will come back, you know, from Drickus being the head coach of the amateurs. You coached when, me and you and yes, all of us, and Eric, brought us everyone, through the, yeah. the ranks. At the red mats. Yeah, the, Mordor. Yeah, Mordor. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then all, the, all those, and then the switch, the the interesting developments in terms of the new gym, the new tactics, and then the the golden opportunity, 10 days notice, making a debut. And they, now you can go through all the fights, do the backlog. It's insane that we're here. I've, I've got goosebumps, yeah. dude. I've, <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's crazy, man. Like, I've been nostalgic this whole camp. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the conversations that, that we had in the mm. team mm. five, six, seven, eight years ago. Yeah. And the promises we made eight years ago yeah. and saying, no, don't worry, but the people don't know. Mm. We're going to bring a belt. Trickers Duplessis is going to bring the UFC middleweight title back to South Africa. Yeah. And we've been saying that for a decade. Yeah. I, I literally, when, when he left, I told, told him, like, I can't wait. Now you're going to go show everyone what we already know. It's I, just like. I told him the same thing. Yeah. I was like, yeah, now, now people are going to see or people are starting to catch up something that we've known for a decade. Yeah. That we've been saying out loud for a decade. Yeah. And yeah. it's great being right. <laughs> huh? So much fun. <laughs> I don't know how it feels to be wrong, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, well, once <laughs> once I thought I was wrong, the, the first time I was wrong when it was, was when I thought I was wrong and I was actually right. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> with the with 2024 kicking off like this, it's it's kind of it's hard to top it. But in terms of your your career as well, what are you looking forward to the most when it comes to not only your career but as Team CIT as a whole for 2024? I think specifically for me, I just want to get back in that cage and start competing again. Mm. It's something I love more than anything in the world. Yeah. And last year I didn't have the opportunity to compete because of injuries. Yes. So I'm really excited to get back in there and just do what I love mm. and just have the opportunity. It's not going to be around forever. Yeah. So I just want to fight, man, yeah. as much as possible, any opportunity I can get. In terms of the team, I'm excited for everything that's happening. Mm. The The growth we've had in terms of, of the pro team, the talent in the pro team, yeah. as well as the talent in my amateur team and our amateur team, it really is, it's really difficult to comprehend. Yeah. And we we haven't had opportunity to really showcase that on all levels. Mm. And I believe this is the year that will showcase that on all levels yeah. and take all the belts. Yeah. Because there's yeah, there's 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 great athletes out there and great coaches out there, but specifically locally, there's there's not another gym mm. that that does it that consistently. Yeah. And I think Everything's starting to come together now and it'll even be more consistently and more talent. Yeah. So I'm super excited. I know we've got big plans for the pros. Mm. 
you know, guys are getting are starting to get international exposure and opportunities. And before we know it, CIT is going to be on every major card in the world. Yeah. And in terms of the amateurs and and the guys that's coming up there, is, it's it's so refreshing to see how serious these guys are taking it. Yeah. And they really want to make a career out of it. And I am also planning on taking every single belt there is available yeah. at the amateurs because yeah. I've got guys, we've got guys in every weight class that can. So much talent, yeah. It's and it makes it so exciting for the next generation of pro athletes. Yeah. You know, so I think we've in a, we're, in a, we're in a good spot where we literally turn into a fight factory where we're just moving them from station to station until they get to the pros and then they take yeah. over. And you working with Coach Neil Geiser quite a lot. Are we going to get to see some some grappling titles as well? I'm definitely going to grapple this year. Yeah. That's that's a big thing. Let's, yeah, I've been I've been working very closely with Coach Neil for the last year year and a half. Yeah. And, you know, it's it's he's he's an amazing amazing coach, yeah. and the way he looks at at fighting is just different. Next level. It's, it's next. It's up. next level. Every it's like this morning as exactly. well. I just want to say it's like it's one of those things. That he'll teach you something, and then you're like. Well, obviously that makes sense, but you like you are too stupid to think of it yourself. So you you have to have someone way smarter than you, Neil Heiser, thinking about that concept, showing it to you, baby stepping you through the process, and and he not is, getting frustrated because yeah. I think when it comes to conversations about fighting, yeah, and about body movements, guys like Coach Neil Heiser mm. and Coach Morenais like. I think they feel like Elon Musk in a bunch in w- just, with yeah. a bunch of stupid people. It can't yeah. it can't be a fun conversation. Definitely, uh, I just wanted to say, like talking to them about fighting is like tra- talking to Elon about AI. Yeah, exactly. It's maybe. it's it's the exact same yeah. analogy. And what what Coach Neil does better than a lot of people, and Coach Moray does it as well, is they look at it from a different perspective. Yeah, they see it from every single angle, and it's it's easy for us to look at it and look at fighting and look at movements and look at this whole thing and say, yeah, but this is what I see. Mm. But if you're not looking at it from every single angle, you're not seeing everything there is to see. Yeah. And they really have opened my thought process to, listen, you can't look from here, you've got to look from here. Yeah. So you can see everything that's going on and try and simplify it to, at the end of the day, we have to, I have a body. Yeah. It works the same as yours. Yeah. And if you start to understand that and understand movement, then the way Coach Neil specifically conceptually teaching it starts to make a lot more sense. Mm. And that's why we feel stupid. It's like, that makes so much sense. Mm. That's, oh yeah, elbow doesn't bend that way. <laughs> Duh. Yeah, I, I actually knew <laughs> I, that. I have one of them. Yes. And yeah. it never goes that way. Yeah. Luckily, I have two, so it's okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's. Yeah. So that's, he's, he's an amazing, mm. amazing coach and he's, Super obsessed. Yeah, which is fun. Which is good. I yeah. think it's the only way. I think uh, definitely. Yeah. Do you have to, with those concepts, do you have to, du- not dumb it down, but do you have to simplify it for the amateurs? Or is it something that's quite universal the moment you get that concept from either coach or from Neil or you have a concept, do you just run with it, tell them, listen, this is how it's done? So I don't dumb it down. Mm. I just don't go into the depth they go to. Yeah. You know, because if you understand the concept, you understand the concept. Yeah. The concept is the concept. Mm. But there are so many levels underneath yeah. and the depth of that concept is never ending. Yeah. And we'll never find the end of that tunnel yeah. because it's ever evolving and ever changing. So specifically the way I approach it with my amateurs is I teach them the concept simplified Mm. right not dumbed down because the concept is the concept right i teach them the concept and then i'll let them play with it yeah figure it out figure it out make mistakes make mistakes get a couple of questions try and fix it as we go and Mm. so and then then i'll see okay this guy is ready for some more depth yes and some more situations and if you if, if if you explain it to, okay, on the ground works the exact same as on the feet. Yeah. You're like, no, but it's not the same thing. Mm. No, it's, it's the exact same thing. Mm. And when they start getting ready for that, and they show you when they're ready for that with the questions that they ask. Yeah. 
with so it. So you're like, okay, you, you get rewarded because you asked the intelligent question. So you upgraded mentally to that point. Well, 100%, because if, if, if you shove it down their throat, yeah. they, like, it's forced. It's forced, yeah. and it's not. And me, and me and Coach Neil had the conversation the other day. He says he doesn't try and teach anybody anything. He tries to guide them so that they find the answer themselves because then it's not his knowledge passed to them, it's yeah. their knowledge. Yeah. And I t- try and take the same approach. That's it. So yeah. try and try and give you, guide you to the answer, but I want you to figure it out. Yeah. Because once you grasp it, yeah. you've got it forever. And coach explains it just in a different way. He would, he would normally say it's a feeling. Like, but you have to get it yourself. It's like the moment you understand a concept, you do movements, you're like, okay, now I have that feeling. I did it by myself. You, and, he, he actually pushed you to that to that feeling. But the moment you have it, it's something that you have. You know, this is the timing. This is the movement. This It all makes sense. It all gels together. And I think that's where Drickus is at this moment. Like, he, he's so calm because everything just works well. Yeah, he's, there's just so much yeah. synergy. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I think that's important. And I also think that's important for the athlete to keep authority and creativity. Yeah, and Coach Mornay and Coach Neil allows us to do that mm. because how can they? We expect me and Drikus or you and Drikus to fight the exact same way. Yeah, you are, have completely different bodies. Yeah, you have completely different attributes. You mm. have so we can't have a one size fits all. Yeah, and they don't they don't look at it like that. They That's they cool. say okay, here's the framework, here's the, here's the boundaries. Mm. You stick. You stay inside the boundaries, but within the boundaries, you can paint your own picture. Yeah. And I think that's a very, very important thing in terms of coaching to leave that creativity and authority with a fighter because at the end of the day, we go in there alone. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we've got a team that got us there, and but you fight by yourself. Yeah. And if coach is shouting stuff from the corner and you don't do them, there's nothing you can do. Mm. Yeah. So you need to be able to take responsibility and authority and make the decisions yeah the last last question before we go the first title defense who do you want to see Drika's face in the first defense that's the easiest question <laughs> you have ever asked me yeah i'm just setting it up for us you know <laughs> it is it will be the biggest fight in ufc history it will be Drika's duplessis against israel adesanya yeah. i said it first and you can pull up that clip, Gila. Yeah. It'll be Opi Transvaal Temple by Loftus <laughs> Park. Yeah. Oh, that would be ins- it, insane. Dude, just the two biggest rivals in the sport. Yeah. From New, Ze- New Zealand, South Africa. Mm. Boko All Blacks. Yeah, There's always the, some. It's the classic. Yeah. I, I don't see. I don't see. I don't see anything else making sense. Yeah. Definitely I mean, if, if Izzy is ready and fit and he wants to fight, firstly, that's the money fight. Mm. Uh, and I believe that will be the biggest fight in UFC history. And I do think we can we can convince Loftus to build a roof. And I do think we just have to chat to Uncle Dana and just tell him, listen, we, 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 we are the only country that has the infrastructure. We we'll the infrastructure. build a roof. We'll build a roof. We are good at tourism, kind of. Kind of. Yeah. We're quite solid. We have roads. Yeah, well, even, here, even, even, if, even if we're not going to do it in, in Pretoria and we're not going to do it here, Cape Town makes sense as well. Yes. If, we, yeah. if we're talking about tourism and what, what Cape Town has to offer, mm. let's do it there then. Yeah. Right? Then we have to get just a roof that side. Yeah, and yeah. That's, but DHL that's a big Yeah, DHL Stadium. Just a little bit of a bigger roof. Yeah. That's fine. That's fine. And then we can do the event there and... I don't see it going any other way and I'm manifesting it now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And on that, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for supporting Team CIT. Thank you for supporting Drickus. We are standing behind you. Your whole country is. And thank you to every Still Knock supporter out there. We have a new middleweight champion coming this week and I can't wait. It's going to be sick. Thank you so much for being here. Thank, and um, Thank you for having me, man. Once, uh, once you have fight news, we'll, ha- we'll have a chat again and then we'll break down whoever you are fighting next. We'll have you back in studio and the studio is here and not at my house. No, no, I've, yeah. I, I got that. I, <laughs> I just assumed like after I saw how bad Gila was at his job, that it was yeah. his job to tell me. Yeah, probably. Yeah, it was. just didn't it do was, it. Yeah, it was definitely. So, 
Yo, Thank fuck you, Sheila. Sheila. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, guys. <laughs>